Hello, Facebook world and everybody out there today. So we are in beautiful Victoria, British Columbia, and I've got the world-renowned Dr. Karen Becker with me. And for a lot of you in the pet world who may already know, we've got the legendary Dave Asprey with us here. I'm a twice New York Times best-selling author, most recently on the monthly science list, which is a really prestigious place to be. I do research on anti-aging and human performance. I'm also a Webby award-winning podcaster with about 50 million downloads of my show, which is number one ranked on iTunes called Bulletproof Radio. So we made a trip out here to talk to Dave for a cancer documentary. And one of the big topics that we talked about today was fasting and the importance of fasting and not overfeeding and the problems that a lot of us pet owners, we don't think about when it comes time to feeding our pets. I remember when I was doing a podcast once on fasting animals, literally hundreds of people called in to say, you know, this guy is crazy. What are you talking about fasting your animal? You should never fast your animal. In fact, the SPCA even contacted me for almost animal abuse when we were talking about a reduction in calories and fasting. But now we know today where we're at, that there's some science behind fasting. I write a lot about what fasting does in people, and turns out it does the same thing in dogs. By the way, this is this is Merlin. He's an English cream dachshund. <laughs> and he's 12, right? Look, look at this trust. Hey, Hi, baby. We do know that there is science for <laughs> fasting and longevity. There's a lot of science for it. In fact, when you stop eating, even for something like 18 hours, in a day, which isn't that long. The first time you do it, you'll, you feel like you're gonna die. Like, oh my God, I'm so hungry. <laughs> There's a hack for that too. But once you get used to it, what happens is you eat a normal amount of calories. You just eat them more during the day. And if you think about what Merlin, maybe, you know, 5,000 years ago when he weighed a hundred pounds and you know ate lamb for dinner because he killed it himself, he would not have been killing three lambs a day to have a few bites each time. It's completely, uh, not possible. He might have caught a mouse every now and then. He might have come across some carrion and chased away some other animals and eaten some. But on the average day, he didn't eat three meals a day. He didn't eat two meals a day. He fasted for 18 hours while running around to find the next meal. That is the natural state for humans and the natural state for animals. And when you convert over to that yourself, something magic happens. Inside your body, inside your dog's body, there's these things called mitochondria. They make energy from food. Like they're the source of all the power that makes you who you are, especially in your brain, which is why my book is called Headstrong. When you stop eating for 18 hours, all of the energy that you went into, that you put into converting food into energy goes into repairing the body and it causes those weak mitochondria that may become cancerous. It causes them to die. So they can be replaced by strong, young, new ones. So to keep Merlin young, what we do is once or twice a week, especially if he's got any extra weight at all, we just don't feed him for a day. And he doesn't run around starving and in pain and all that. He actually walks around wagging his tail because when we do feed him, we feed him the right stuff. He has plenty of fat. He doesn't feel like he's going to die. And he wags his tail and he asks for food once or twice. When he doesn't get it, he goes to sleep and hangs out. It's pretty amazing. When we do feed him though, we put something that's a core ingredient, Bulletproof Coffee. And Bulletproof Coffee is pretty well known now, 48 million cups last year. The stuff is called Brain Octane Oil. And Brain Octane Oil is a special extract of coconut oil. It's much stronger than even something called MCT oil, if you've heard of that in pet food. And it doesn't cause you or your dog to uh, poop on the rug, we'll put it that way. So what you do is you put just a, a little bit, start it out with Merlin, it's about a teaspoon, it's the right amount for him. I do about two tablespoons of that stuff in my Bulletproof coffee. When you do that, it puts your body in the same state as if you've been fasting for several days. When you fast for a couple of days, you stop having hunger cravings altogether and your brain just totally turns on. Most of us have never fasted for long enough to feel that, but there's a reason every major religious tradition tells you to fast for mental clarity. It actually works but well, you can be a little bit lazy or you can be a dog who's never really gonna be looking at mental clarity, then you just use the oil, which puts you in that same metabolic state called ketosis. So Merlin gets ketones every day from brain octane. He gets it on grass-fed beef or lamb, which eats the grass that grows at the front of our organic farm. I'm fortunate to live in the middle of nowhere so we can have an organic farm. And then he gets a raw egg yolk from a pastured chicken. He gets the brain octane, gets a little bit of liver or heart, and sometimes some chlorella and a small amount of chopped raw vegetables, something like a celery or a carrot. And to finish all that off, we take the Bulletproof Collagen, which is a 
a really important protein that dogs get when they chew bones, but they don't get that much of it. And we sprinkle the collagen powder on his food. And collagen is required for healthy skin, bones, hair, nails. I put that in my coffee, I feed it to my kids, and I feed it to, to Merlin, because he's worth it. Part of the reason that this diet works so well for Merlin is that Merlin's fat adapted. You wisely have made your dog a uh, keto adapted or fat adapted so dogs can burn fat or sugar which comes from carbs and starches as fuel it's much more biologically appropriate that dogs burn fat that's their evolutionary source of energy and it's much more uh, appropriate it's low metabolic stress it's low um, in terms of, uh, of, of overall um, creating in, an inflammatory response fat helps to reduce inflammation in the body versus carbohydrates so Merlin does well being fed once a day I feed my doxy once a Today because they're uh, evolutionary, uh, evolutionarily adapted to just consume a species appropriate diet, which is higher in fat, great quality source of protein and low to no carbohydrates or starches. That being said, if your dog is adapted to burning carbohydrates, they're going to be hungry two to three hours after they're done eating. So they're going to come back to the kitchen at noon and they're going to come back to the kitchen at you know breakfast, lunch, and dinner is going to create in them the desire to eat all the time, which of course we know leads to obesity diabetes, higher blood sugar, metabolically stressful, um, mitochondrially stressful foods. Uh, so these are things that we can avoid by feeding appropriate macronutrients, but also recognizing that the only people that want you to feed your pet three times a day are the pet food companies selling those terrible quality foods. So when we recognize the marketing and when we recognize the volume of food on the back of those pet food bags, when they're saying feed your dog a tremendous amount of calories, they're selling a product. They're not selling you good health. So it, something to think about. There's a, a slogan. You can't eat just one. Yes. This is what people <laughs> food companies do. Yes. It's the same thing that dog food companies are doing with processed food. They're creating food that causes food cravings. And if food cravings starts in your cells, when they believe that they are going to die because they're not getting enough sugar fast enough because this feeling was induced by inappropriate food. That's why you feel like you're going to die if you don't eat five or six times a day if you're stuck that way. I used to weigh 300 pounds. I lost 100 pounds of fat and I've kept it off. That's why um, I write books on nutrition and all that stuff because I kept it off by eating more undamaged, the right kind of fat, the same stuff that Merlin eats. When you get rid of the processed junk that triggers the cravings, you realize and your dog realizes that it's not going to die if it doesn't eat and it actually calms down. So the fact that today I've had nothing but a cup of bulletproof coffee and I've been going for six or seven hours, I'm just not hungry. I know I'm not going to die if I don't eat. I'll probably eat in the next couple hours and then I'll have dinner and I'll be fine. Instead of what would have happened before, it's been like a, a screaming voice in my head. It's like, eat a bagel, you're gonna die. Your dog, when it's jumping up and down and trying to steal food off the table and pushing you and all that stuff, it has that same voice in its head. It feels like it's gonna die because it's eating food that's inappropriate for it. When you get a dog on a high, healthy fat, undamaged fat kind of diet, it completely changes the personality. Merlin is the sixth dachshund I've had in my life. He is the least food obsessed of any dog I've ever had. And he likes to eat, but it's not the reason he exists. He I think one of the biggest things for me was that study that was done a few years back where they took golden retrievers. They broke these panels up of dogs and they fed some of these dogs, free fed all the food that they could possibly eat. And then they had ones that were calorically restricted. And those golden retrievers lived longer. The ones that ate less live longer. Any tips that you guys have for, let's say somebody who's starting out who's a little bit freaked out about fasting their dog, is there something they can do to get started? Well, let's first talk about the fact that dogs naturally will want to fast themselves. I cannot tell you how many times people have come into the hospital and they say, oh my gosh, my dog is skipping breakfast. So I've added Parmesan cheese. I've used a topper. I'm adding whatever I can. I want my dog to eat breakfast. Most of the time, animals are saying, you know what? I'm just not interested. Dogs are evolutionarily adapted to hunt at best once a day, maybe every other day, uh, oftentimes seasonally, maybe once or twice a week. Dogs weren't meant to eat breakfast. So if you have a dog that walks away from the bowl, honor that. that is their own body saying, I'm not interested. Don't make your dog eat breakfast, lunch, or dinner if they're not hungry. So let's start with that. Honor a dog's desire. If they're not interested in eating a meal or if they want to skip a meal, awesome. They're self-fasting and that should just be respected. There's a, a belief system in there, which is, is it's very deep down. It's like, if you don't eat, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. My, my six-year-old uh, last year said, I'm not going to eat this. I'm not going to eat what we're having for dinner. And I looked at him and I said, Alan, 
That's wonderful. I'm really happy that you've decided to try intermittent fasting. It turns out that you can go 30, 60, even 90 days without eating and you won't die. So skipping one meal is gonna be really good for you. So I do that sometimes at breakfast too. You can skip dinner, we won't have any snacks, and then you'll just eat breakfast tomorrow. So this is gonna be really good, you'll be stronger. And he looked at me with absolute horror and said, I think I'll eat it. I go, that's totally cool. But the point is, he's the, he knows he's not gonna die. He didn't get that, that thing. And a lot of us got this because our parents went through World War II and there yep. really were food shortages. And it's like a visceral fear. Your dog's not gonna die if you don't feed him for three days. Right. He won't be happy but he won't die. And just, if you know that, if your daughters won't eat for a meal, it's okay. It's totally fine. And if you're insti if you're considering instituting intermittent fasting, and if it freaks you out to think about your, day not, your dog not eating all day, try doing a bone broth meal. Just yeah. replace a food meal for a liquid meal. And do you think that by reducing some of the meals, that not only will it help with longevity, but what about things like cancer that we didn't talk about? Is there research with cancer and fasting? High protein diets trigger cancer, and some kinds of protein do it more than others. And when you lower the protein or when you skip some meals, it does lower your risk of cancer because it makes mitochondria function better. Well, the thing that's really cool that, about this, and I'm sure a lot of people are wondering maybe what even brain octane is, coconut oil. Well, it's about 5% of what's in coconut oil. So the coconut oil itself, you can put some of that in your, in your dog's food or in your food, and it raises ketones as much as not eating for eight hours. But this raises it four times higher. So it's almost as if you skipped a day or two of fasting to get into that state. And it's a, a very unique oil that metabolizes differently than coconut, differently than MCT oil. It's a subcategory of MCT that's in, in university studies shown to be the most ketogenic. So it's a, it's a source of external ketones. You want your dog to have some ketones present in its diet, but if you're feeding them kibble, there's just too much carbs. They'll never get ketones. And there you go, and there you have it. Awesome. This is information that we thought a lot of you should have when it comes to fasting, that you don't have to feed your pets all the time. For those pet owners out there who freak out when their dogs sell fast, it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Honor it. Honor it. Thanks so much, guys, for watching, and we'll see you guys soon. And if you haven't already checked it out, Check out Dave's podcast. See you guys. Oh, and Merlin, we gotta say bye. Bye, Merlin. Merlin. <laughs>